Hi everyone and welcome to my presentation. My name is Janis Hagener from the Institute for Robotics and Cognitive Systems at the University of Lübeck. And today I want to present to you our work on discrete pseudo-healthy synthesis in the context of personalized cardiovascular prothesis shaping. And let's start with why we actually need pseudo-healthy synthesis here. Let's imagine a patient comes to the hospital with a specific pathology and we want to design a personalized prothesis for him or her. Then the typical workflow looks like this and we require a medical image, we extract the desired prosthesis shape from it, we manufacture the prosthesis and then it can be installed during surgery. However, such a naive approach is typically not possible because it's typically not possible to extract this desired prosthesis shape directly from the medical image. Just imagine that pathology induced, for example, a deformation of the organ at risk, so it is bigger than it should be then obviously the medical image only shows a pathological shape and obviously this is not the desired prosthesis shape. So the only information we can extract from the medical image is surrogate information, for example the surrounding tissue or the pathological shape. And based on the surrogate information we can estimate a healthy shape that corresponds to the desired prosthesis shape and this mapping is what we call pseudo-healthy synthesis. In recent years, um, several methods have been published for pseudo-healthy synthesis in the context of personalized prosthesis shaping. And all of them have in common that they feature a continuous prediction model, which basically means that the uh, prosthesis shape is drawn from a continuum of shapes. Um, one example is uh, to encode all the healthy shapes um, from the data set to a latent representation using a variational autoencoder, um, such that the latent representation is basically some kind of shape space where each point in this latent space um, corresponds to one shape of the prosthesis. And um, for the inference step, which means we know a pathological sample, um, we can estimate the individually optimal prosthesis shape by mapping into this latent space to the point that corresponds to the optimum prosthesis, which is obviously a regression problem. And um, using the decoder we can synthesize a an image of this prosthesis shape. As mentioned before, this is a continuous prediction model because it's a regression, which means um, the model is able to predict any point within this latent space representation. Um, so a continuum. And this um, has several downsides from a clinical application point of view. Um, actually, this procedure comes at very, very high cost because we um, create a completely individual and completely new and novel prosthesis for each and every patient, which does not only come with high cost but also with regulatory issues and since each and every prosthesis then is a completely new device that has never been tested. And of course, we have logistical challenges. So what we ask ourselves in this work is whether there is something in between this full personalization that is with really high costs and on the other hand side the one-size-fits-all approach as it is now in clinic. And um, therefore we came up with um, a discrete approach for discrete pseudo-healthy synthesis. We start um, similar to the continuous approach by encoding our healthy shapes to a latent representation but now the key idea is that it's not possible to, um, to predict each and every point within this latent space but only typical shapes that are quite typical for this kind of organ. And um, the first question is how to identify these shapes and therefore we perform the clustering in this latent space um, and uh, each cluster center then serves as a typical shape, as a, as a shape type that can serve as a prosthesis type. So once again in the inference step, if we know the pathological shape, we map to the latent space but only to the shape types. So we basically map to the individually optimal shape type that can serve as a prosthesis. And this is a classification problem now, because we don't draw out of a continuum, but only of this discrete set of shape types. And once again, we can synthesize an, an image of this prosthesis by using the decoder network. And uh, this comes with uh, two main advantages from the clinic point of view. At first, it's way more easy to, to apply, um, which is due to the fact that um, these shape types, these typical prosthesis shapes, can be manufactured in mass production and they can have regulation and this is way easier and um, with much less costs. And there's also a nice advantage from a mathematical point of view because we implicitly constrain our model to avoid unrealistic predictions because each and every prediction will be a typical shape. 
a few words on the evaluation. We uh, tested our method and benchmarked our method on a data set of ultrasound images of ex vivo porcine aortic roots. The cool thing about this data set is that a healthy and a pathological shape is known for each sample. And um, we evaluated our method on this data set and um, at first we could see that the identified shape types um, using the clustering and latent space are realistic and that they are also complementary. And um, in a qualitative analysis uh, comparing the um, predicted prothesis and the um, healthy ground truth, um, we see that there is quite a good overlap and good fit. And um, in a quantitative analysis we could even show that our discrete approach outperformed the continuous prediction approach. Um, so we think that our, this um, discrete approach is quite promising um, for clinical application and since um, this method is not limited to cardiovascular prothesis, it's in general a promising method for personalized prothesis shaping. If you're interested and if you have questions, I'm very happy to see you at the panel discussion or in a smaller round at my research poster. Thank you very much and see you there.